we will not ca capitalize articles, prepositions, or coordinating conjunctions, and finally the two in infinitives, like to go would be an infinitive. So we won't capitalize that. But all the others we're going to capitalize. Basically, your, your upper lowercase capitalization rules that were learned earlier in your schooling. In the past, print was the medium, the default medium, but it's no longer. So some of the things I might have, I might have print. Everything online is a web source. I might have a CD, I might have a television, I might have radio, I might have a transcript, I might have a manuscript, I might have film. So I'm going to have a lot of different choices that I have out here to distinguish what type of source did I use. And that needs to be with each entry. So medium of publication, this is a book that has multiple editors. So I have Lauder et al. And then the name of the book followed by the edition. Notice whether that, and I just spell out ED. I don't spell out the whole word edition, and it is lowercase. And this is by volumes, so I want to take and specify to my reader that the multiple volumes when I'm looking at the entire package of what this book is. And then it's Boston, and then Houghton. Houghton Mifflin is actually the full name of that publisher. All I need is Houghton, because anyone who knows this company knows that is it. And I don't need other the year of publication, and then print. Uh, Piper Andrew, another, uh, this is a PMLA, which is a journal. And so again, I have the volume and issue in there with the date. I have the page numbers, and I have print. Getting again with that traditional print source. Okay. The third one is giving you an example of what do I do if I have two authors. First author is last name, first name, comma, and, I need to spell out the word and, first name, last name of the second author. So second and third authors are always in normal order. Then again, my title in quotation marks, my journal title in italics, the date, and the page numbers. Notice this date does not have parentheses around it. And the main reason for that is that it does not have a volume and issue. I don't need the volume and issue, the parentheses if I fail to have a volume and issue. So I will include volume and issue for all journal articles. If in doubt, give it. It's rather one of the rules in documentation. If I have a doubt of whether I need this or not, I should provide it. Okay. Uh, but newspapers and magazines are not generally done in that fashion. I don't use them. Okay. So again, if in doubt, see, is this a magazine or a journal? Not really sure. Give it. Be safe. So some examples of that, uh, the Bartholomew source, architecture, uh, Kansas Quarterly. Uh, it is a journal, so I have the volume and issue. And notice on this issue, I have 3-4. It is possible to have it over a couple different issues based on how that magazine or journal has set it up. So if it does provide that for you on your source copy, provide it in your citation. Uh, uh, ben, the demon of writing, paperwork in the arena, terror representations. Notice on this one, I only have a volume. I do not have an issue. I only have a volume. I do not have an issue, so I will give that. Okay. If I only had an issue, I will give that. That number will be in there. Um, again, giving the print source. And then this th final one has some other items with the William and Mary Quarterly. It has a few other items in here. In this, I also had that this is the third series of this particular journal. And so I want to take, make sure that I get that in there. Now, when I'm pulling sources off from things like EBSCO Host, it's going to give me five, page five, four pages. So I need to do my math. Five plus four is nine, so five dash nine is my page range for that source. I want to make open articles for given names in newspapers. So I don't have to do the New York Times for us here. I will simply do New York Times. But if this was a foreign newspaper that I found something in, such as Le Monde, I will have to give the lay. That lay part of that stands for the in French. So for newspapers, I do have to give it. If the city of publication is not given in the name of the paper, I do have to add 
the name of the city of the publication in there. There's going to be a lot of pub newspapers that have similar titles in multiple states. The exceptions on this are going to be newspapers such as the Wall Street Journal or the Chronicle of Higher Education. They are national publications, and they will be the exception. I do not have to give that city a publication with those two publications. If I have a complete date, I'm going to do it in the order of day, then month, and then year. If I have seasons of summer, spring, winter, fall, that is part of the date, and I must give it. I'm going to abbreviate all months except three, May, June, and July. So all months are going to be abbreviated down to three letters. It's going to be tough for some of us because we learned that September was SEPT. We now use SEP, period. Make sure you include the period with the abbreviation. And if on the masthead of a newspaper it says late edition, New England edition, I must also provide that information. So some source copies of ex for newspapers. I have the Allerton source. came from the Globe and Mail. This Globe and Mail is in Toronto. Notice that I put this in square brackets immediately after the name of the paper. It is not in italics, but the name of the paper is. 